Hello friends. Today we are going to look at some competitive coding in Haskell. I actually want to start a series of videos where we start solving competitive coding problems in Haskell and improve our function programming skills that way. I am hoping that it would be a very good way of learning for folks who are just getting started with Haskell. As for the platform, I am going to use HackerRank simply because I have used it in the past. It's simple enough to navigate. It's got a good report problems and it lets you submit your code in Haskell. Let's look at solve me first problem. This is the easiest problem on the platform. The purpose of this problem is to get you acquainted with HackerRank as a platform. But we are going to use it to familiarize ourselves with input parsing and passing the parse input to our pure functions which actually implement the logic to solve the problem. Now, in this problem, even though the input format specified in the sample input here says that it will be a equal to 2 and b equal to 3, we are not going to get the actual characters a, b, and equal sign. It's just going to be two numbers separated by a new line. So the task is to parse them as two numbers, print the sum, and that's about it. Let's see how we can parse the numbers. There is a function called interact which takes a function as the argument and perform some IO action. What is that IO action? Well, the entire input from the standard input device is passed to this function as its argument and the resulting string by the application of the function we passed as the first argument to interact is output to the standard output device. So our main function we can just write it as interact uh, applied to some function f, which we don't know what yet, but we do know what is the type definition of f, f. So our f will be of the type string to string. And as of now, f is still undefined. Let's see if the program compiles. We are still good. Now the string will be something like uh, let's say 2 and 3 are the numbers, then it will be separated by a new line. Okay. Uh, how do we split it into the constituent numbers like 2 and 3? Um, so we can use the words function for that. So the type definition of the words function is it takes a string and then uh, you know tokenizes that, essentially splitting them with new lines or spaces. So if we do words s, it's going to give you a list of two strings, two and three in this case. Uh, it's just going to strip away with new lines. It doesn't matter how many, uh, you know, new lines or spaces are separated uh, within the tokens. So for example, if you have a string like space, space s2, then another new line, lots of spaces three, and then another new line in the trailing. Um, we can still do words s and it's going to give us the same output as it did before. So it's a very useful function to, you know, parse the tokens that are of interest to you. In order to convert each of the string in this list to an integer, we can use the read function for that. So the type definition of the read function is, given a string, uh, it will give you the value of type a, given that the a is readable. And if we look at something like, for example, integer, um, it defines a bunch of interfaces for it. And, you know, the, the instance is of the interfaces. And you can see that read is one of those. So you can see that integer is readable, which is quite intuitive, you know. Uh, let's see if we can do this, read2. And it says, oh, it cannot parse it because... Uh, it's not because it cannot parse it, but because it cannot interpret the type definition. Uh, it cannot ascertain that the two here is an int or an integer with, you know, arbitrary precision or it's a float value or double value. So in cases where the type definition is not clear for, um, you know, the compiler, uh, we need to provide it uh, with something like this. And it's going to, you know, produce an integer in this case. Or we can say double and then it's going to, you know, produce a double of two. Now, once we know how to read one string, um, in this case, we'll have a list of strings, uh, you know, as we set, as we produce them using the words function. So in order to read each of them, uh, we just use the map application, uh, which basically takes a function, uh, takes a list of values, and then basically applies that function to each value. So we can say map read, um, 
and then word s and in this case it's not going to understand the resulting list of is going to be a list of integers a list of doubles so again we here provide the type definition for compilers and you see we basically get back a list of numbers once we get that back it is a trivial thing to uh, you know just sum them up using the sum function and oops yeah it's not going to be a list of integers in this case it's just going to be a simple number five so that's essentially the solution to our problem we take the string um, separate by words then apply the read function to each of them using the map function and then resulting value should be summed up but there's another thing that we need to do if we want to you know replace the definition of f here uh, with this with this uh, you know expression because the type definition of f is it produces a string and this one produces a number uh, so in this case we just need to you know apply the show function which takes uh, a type a and then which is showable and then produces a string out of it so in this case it's just going to be show and then the full expression that we just saw so map read uh, words and s now here is an interesting thing if you have uh, a function applied to some argument and you know you can see the equivalence expression in the both side um, then if f is equal to all this expression applied to s then you can basically eliminate the s from all of this and then it becomes you know just a function definition and here dollar sign means you're applying it to some value but here we are not applying it to anything we're just defining a function as an expression so in this case we can uh, you know use the compositional operator to uh, say that our function is just going to be a composition of words then map read then sum and then show and let's see if our program compiles we are still good and that essentially is a solution to our problem so i've copied our implementation here and let me just uh, you know remove this uh, default implementation that they have given it is quite actually uh, simple enough in this case so let's remove that let's put our thing and see if we can run the code processing and yeah we are good congratulations we solved the problem uh, you know even this f function is just something we defined uh, but we can have it as a lambda itself we don't need to um, define like a separate function for it because you're not going to use it anywhere so we can just copy this whole thing and put it in place of f and then eliminate the f entirely and you know when you don't need to provide a type definition it's good if you are going to review this code in future or not but here we are just gonna be short and that's your one line solution to this problem let's see if you can run it we can let's see if we can submit it it's the same test two test cases and yeah congratulations you solved the first problem on hacker rank in haskell